Over the years, I've used a bunch of push blocks and push sticks. Some that I've made, and some that can be purchased. But there's been one push block that is my go-to almost every time I use the table saw. This may not seem like much, but let me show you some of its benefits. The main body of this is inexpensive and can be built really easily. It has plenty of grip on the bottom, providing a lot of control, especially with smaller pieces. And the bottom of this is designed that if it comes in contact with the blade, that is okay, as long as we have a nice firm grip on whatever we're trying to cut under it. The base and grip can be filled in over time for extended use. On the back, there is a ledge to help push wood through, and as you can tell here, I've abused this one quite a bit. The ledge is also removable so you can make replacement pieces that you can add to your block. And the ledge can be pre-adjusted to whatever height you like. In my case, I like it about a quarter inch. And my favorite part of this entire push block is actually the handle. It allows me to have a nice firm grip whenever I'm trying to push stuff through the saw, and if I have to, I can twist stuff with a lot of control as well. And with all of these benefits, let me show you just how simple it was for me to make this. First off, we need some wood for the base. This can be brand new, purchased just from the store, or you can go over to your scrap bin and pick out some pieces. I'm gonna be using two by fours for the base, but if you don't have any, don't let that limit you. Let me show you what else I found in my scrap bin. I found a two by 10 that can be ripped down to the appropriate size. I also found some one by fours that you can easily combine together to get the thickness of the two bys. Now there's two more things we need to keep in mind when we're grabbing our wood. Try and grab the pieces with minimal amount of knots. Knots. knots are hard to cut through when we don't want that issue. Also, we want to make sure we're dealing with long grain. We don't want to get wood and combine it together for cross grain because that could easily cause kickback and just make it difficult to use. So make sure we're dealing with long grain. Sometimes I'm limited when I'm making these push blocks and I still have knots in the wood. In those cases, I try and face those knots as far this up as possible and that way they're not an issue when they get hit by the blade. I also like to look at the end grain and alternate them as I put them together. That way it's less likely for them the warp and twist on me. It's now time to glue these together. We want to make sure we do this on a flat surface so that the bottom of our block is flat as possible. Make sure to apply a decent amount of glue that fully covers each side so that we know that this is a very strong bond. Then line everything up and use some clamps to hold it together. And if you have any kind of glue squeeze out, let's use a damp cloth to try and remove as much of that as possible. Now I'm gonna set this to the side and give it plenty of time for that glue to dry. And while I wait on that, I'm gonna start on the handle. Now you can make this handle out of a lot of things, but I'm gonna use some three quarter inch PVC pipe and fittings, cause one, I already have it on hand, and two, it's really easy to assemble. Plus my hand fits around it really nicely. To build this handle, I'm gonna use a T fitting, a 90 degree elbow, a 45 degree elbow, and about five and a half inches of pipe. Now using some pipe cutters, I'm gonna cut about an inch and a half off of this pipe. Then we wanna take that little piece and we wanna insert it into the 90 degree elbow and combine it with the T. Now we wanna make sure that these two are pushed real tight together so there's no gaps, and then turn the elbow so that it's at 90 degrees to the T. Now when we're assembling PVC, we just gotta keep in mind, it's just a snug fit. You just push it together and it just stays there unless we add some glue. In my original design, I didn't do this, and I'm probably gonna go back and do this in this next design, is add some glue just for safety. But keep in mind that if there's ever any major kickbacks with these, these could potentially come apart and cause injury. So keep that in mind. I'm then gonna take the remaining pipe and insert it into the 90 degree elbow, and then take the 45 degree elbow and put it on the other end. And of course, make sure those two are Ugh, nice and snug together. Now the block and glue still might be drying, but I want to test fit the handle so we can figure out exactly how we want to attach it to the base. Looking at this original push block, you'll see two screws going through the elbow of this PVC. And I want to do the same configuration on this new one as well. And just in case you don't know, it's never a good idea to drill or screw a screw straight into a piece of PVC. There's always a chance that it could crack or break. And if we look at this original push block, you'll see that I actually drill a hole so that the screw could go through it. And to prepare for those holes, we need to find out exactly where the top of this pipe is going to be. So I'm going to take this 45 degree angle right here where it creases, and I'm going to put it right on the edge of the block and that is the configuration that I would like to have because I can get my hand under there real well so now I know where the top of those holes need to be. Now looking on the back of the handle we have one screw going through here to keep it secure so once we have this in position we now know where to drill that hole as well. The screws I plan on using are a number 10 at three inches long, and to make sure we clear everything, I'm gonna use a quarter inch bit to drill the holes. Now I'm gonna use just a standard hand drill to drill these out. So I grabbed the piece of scrap wood and I've used some strong tape to hold the pipe in place as I drill them out. Whenever you go to start drilling this out, go real slow, don't take it fast, that way you can control it. Right there. Now that we have the holes drilled, we can see exactly how deep our three inch screws are gonna protrude into our push block. 
once we get them in place, they only stick out about an inch and a half, meaning these screws are not even gonna go halfway through our block. So there should never be a chance when these screws actually hit the blade when we're using it. And to give our glue as long as possible to dry, let's next start to work on the back ledge of our push block. And for that, I'm gonna use at least quarter to half inch material because I want it to be nice and strong and help resist any kickback. When I cut these, I realized I cut them just a little bit shy of the full width of the block. That's okay though, as long as the holes that we're gonna drill in this can get into the meaty part of the block, this should still work fine. Then I'm gonna pre-drill these to make sure they don't crack. After I've got the first one cut out, I'm actually gonna use it as a template to make some more, cause over time, I will replace some of these. Now, finally taking the block out of the clamps, and we're gonna match it up with the handle. And if you notice, if I rest it on top here, that the handle is a little bit shy of the end of the block. I actually prefer the handle and the block to be about the same length. So, I'm gonna take this over to the miter saw, and we're gonna trim this down. Then let's go over the sides and the top of our block with a little bit of sandpaper so we can remove some of those rough edges. But don't go over the bottom, we want those to still be pretty sharp. And then using some tape like we did earlier, we're gonna secure the handle to the block so we can pre-drill these holes so they don't crack the wood. And instead of using a quarter inch bit, we're gonna use an eighth inch bit for this. And then when you go to install your screws, you want them to be snug, but don't over tighten or you'll flex your PVC and break it. And once I have the screws fully in place, this should be nice and sturdy. Then I'm gonna test fit the ledge. We want it to stick down about a quarter inch or so, even on each side. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just pretty close. And then I'm gonna mark these by just doing a little dent. Then I'm gonna go in here and pre-drill both of these holes so we can add those screws. For a lot of people, this push block might be good enough as is, but I actually wanna take it one step further. I wanna add a little bit of hot glue to the bottom of this push block, and that'll allow it to grip a lot better and just be a little bit easier whenever I wanna move stuff around. Looking here at the old push block, you can see I've did layer upon layer of glue because over time, as the glue gets cut away or I get big grooves cut into the wood, I just add another small layer of glue on top and that allows it to have a nice firm grip. Now, whenever I'm using the push block on the table saw, I always make sure that the wood is fully against the ledge in the back and then I just gently push it through the saw. I let the saw blade do the cutting. I don't try and force it through. You're just trying to use this to guide your wood through. You're not trying to just force it to cut faster. And if you happen to be cutting a wide piece of wood, not only can you use the push block, but I'd probably suggest using a push stick on the side just to kind of guide it in and make sure it doesn't move around. Another option I had when I built my original push block was adding a French cleat to the front edge. This doesn't interfere whenever you're trying to push wood through and it makes it really easy to hang on the wall right next to my table saw, so whenever I need it, reach over, grab it, and use it really easily. Now, I truly believe this is one of the best push blocks I've ever used on a table saw, and I plan on using a design like this for years and years to come. Now, if by chance you do build one of these, please keep in mind, this does not take away the danger of a table saw. A table saw is still very, very dangerous with or without this tool. So if you build one of these, just remember, it's just an accessory, it just, can provide a little bit of assistance, but it will not stop major catastrophes or major kickbacks or any other dangers that can happen on a table saw. So please, whenever you're using a table saw, please be careful.